Hey guys, so I just thought it would be fun now that I have some downtime to sit and crochet and just kind of talk about, you know, I've been doing crochet for a while and I know a lot of people have actually been asking me like while I've been streaming like for tips and tricks for crochet and there's tons of videos out there. So, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to say anything unique, but I think it is interesting to hear sometimes like why people give certain advice. Um, <coughs> And like, for me, part of it also is that like, I'm not an affiliate for anything. Like everything I say is just my opinion. Like, you know, these are genuinely just how I feel about certain things. And I guess my first and foremost thing, since I, okay, I'm abroad right now and I'm really missing Joann's. And a lot of people think that because they don't have a Joann's in their area, that they can't really um, buy their things. And I just want to let you know to like check their website and check online because they actually do ship and sometimes they have really good coupons that either make that save you enough money to wear shipping like I don't want to like say it's free because that's like me girl mathing but you either literally get like 99 cent shipping or the coupon value outweighs how much you're paying shipping and so I just I really like their big twist yarn I really like a lot of their stuff right now I'm using some wool it's my first time like buying from a smaller company I'm in Europe, so I kind of went and I had some stuff go down uh, last week, not this past week, but the week before. And, um, you know, it's just something I needed for myself, I think, and I had it in my budget, so I just went for it. But I do really just like their big twist, like, value yarn. Like, it's softer than most acrylics. It's really just nice to work with, and I would say it's pretty beginner-friendly. And it's cheap enough to wear, like... You know if you frog it so like when you go back on projects sometimes the yarn will fall apart a little bit that's very common with most yarns it's not just the quality or like big twist specific thing um and so what's nice about how cheap it is with that issue is that you can just cut off however much yarn because they have like almost 300 yards of yarn so if you're cutting off like a foot because it just becomes super hard to work with that's fine and also, I'm using a tulip hook right now, which I'm also loving, but I normally use clover hooks. And Joann's, like, especially if you're in person, um, they have these 60% off coupons that are super worth it. Like, you can get the whole clover set, which is normally, like, 40 or 50 bucks, 60% off. Or if you're just, you can just stop by, like, on your way somewhere and just grab a hook of the size you want, and it's, like, $6. Um, and I could be completely wrong with the prices. It's been a while. Sorry, the video cut out a bit there. I'm actually abroad, so like my phone's like fighting me constantly. Like, do you want to do an update for the European or version or like anything like that? And I'm like, mm, actually, no, I'm okay. But um, yeah, so that's my main recommendation with like starters yarn, I guess. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of be going to be doing this informally. It's more of like random tangents. I just thought it would be fun to have you know just one of the like not I mean and I'll want to go and do the edited version of this later but I always like the really raw genuine videos a lot so I think that's kind of my style and so yeah I mean honestly like I'm trying to think about how to explain it because I think that a lot of the time like they talk about like what to do when you're crocheting versus what you're not supposed to do like with the technique and I think a lot of the time they don't really give like a recommendation for like um yarn to start with or stuff like that or and like sometimes they're just an affiliate and so nothing's wrong with being an affiliate I actually hope to be for some of my favorite brands but um you know there's always that seed of doubt I guess of like do they actually but for me I really just like all this stuff um, and that being said, for cotton, like, they have sugar and cream and stuff, I think it's called, at Joann's, and that works fine. Um, but I like to buy from Hobby Online personally, so maybe just as, like, a longer term thing, that could be something to, fun to keep in mind. And I'll go through and watch this again later, and, you know, maybe I'll have it be an overlay in the video, maybe I'll just have it in the description with timestamps, you know, whatever I can do. Because I'm still abroad, so I don't really have access to my main, like, PC with like dual monitor and stuff and I'm not sure how well my laptop would do. So we're just gonna do the best we can with this and maybe I'll talk over all this again at home. I probably will, especially over a stream or something. Um, but either way, um, I guess the other thing with that 
kind of kind of piggybacking off what I said with the clover crochet hooks is whatever you do like a lot of us start with I think Boyer brand like the metal crochet hooks we sometimes get from relatives or you know we get from Dollar Tree or like in a crochet kit off Facebook marketplace or something like that's how I started was a Facebook marketplace someone getting rid of the stuff they tried to learn with and you know ended up not liking it um, but getting one that has like one of these parts of it is really important like I actually like you know I can't really give like medical advice but I used to work at the orthopedic in like orthopedic hospital for my city and we had so many people get carpal tunnel from um, various like repetitive movements and so I was talking with the doctor I worked under and they were saying that yeah it actually happens a lot with the kind of crafts you do too so since then I've just been really cautious and try to like warn people about that it also just makes it a lot more pleasant to work with things especially like when you're working with thicker yarns like I normally work with like almost lace so I'm like fighting this yarn compared to normal um, and it's wool so I'm not sure how that changes it compared to acrylic versus cotton I'm loving the texture and feel of it, but it is like kind of draining, like I have to take breaks. And taking breaks and kind of just like stretching your hands, have your little villain era, um, is really important for being able to crochet like sustainably for your body in the long run. So make sure to do that too, like no matter what kind of yarn or hook you're working with, like no matter how smooth it feels, like you should do that every so often. You know, I'm not perfect, it's not like if you forget it's the end of the world, you know? Um, and with that being said, like, don't ever feel like your work isn't as good or something if you do use the, like, generic, like, budget yarns, like the Joann's. I use that stuff, like, and I don't mean that as in, like, I'm above everybody else, but, like, I mean that I make a significant portion of my income from crochet. And honestly, having cheaper materials, or like cheaper materials from like just the monetary sense, like because I know a lot of people who get into crochet do end up selling a little bit just because what do you do with all the stuff you make if you do it a lot, right? Um, and so I will, if you take that out of the material cost, and it usually comes with the bonus of acrylic and cotton, people are less likely to have reactions to than say wool, like my mom's allergic to wool. And I only recently discovered I wouldn't, which is why I'm like going ham with all the wool projects. Um, and this is going to be a poncho. I'm not going to have enough of this fun yarn, because you can see. But when I get home, I actually just bought a spinning wheel to try and learn how to do that. I'm going to stream as I try and learn how to do that. But even aside from that, I'm getting into dyeing too. I connected with a with a friend I've known for a while, but we kind of drifted apart, and she's actually a graduate student in weaving and fiber arts, so I'm going to be working with her. But um, you can, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some more wool, like just the white and finish it, so that we have the like top part being this pretty little, um, you know, like color, and then we have the rest being like this little poncho type thing. I just thought that would be fun, um, and. So yeah, no, I kind of a tangent there, but not using like the nice wool or the super nice cotton or the indie dyed stuff, all that is personal preference. Like I still use, like I'm making my friend a giant blanket and if I didn't use like the Joann's Big Twist, then what I, like I would not be able to afford to do that. And secondly, acrylic, which is like the budget yarn, like it is the most machine washable. And so what that means is like blankets, baby blankets, like we all know that they're spit up, there's vomit, there's all that stuff with babies. Like babies are kind of gross. Like we love them, but like if you have anything that's like not machine washable, you're in for a world of hurt, you know? So like cotton is like good if like, you know, you're worried the baby will react. But when they get into that toddler chaos spilling sippy cups stage, like, you know, like it's, it's whatever. And for like clothing... You can do cotton or acrylic or really anything. And, you know, as long as you soften the acrylic if it's kind of scratchy, which can happen with like any acrylic brand, but you can literally just leave that in fabric softener in your set. And it's, it's really nice, I love it. And um, so if you're just good about that, then you're all set. Um, you know, less allergic reactions, whatever. I just think it's really important to like kind of note that like it doesn't matter what materials you use like your work is still valid and cool and valuable like and it has more value than just like the monetary sense like 
one thing I talk about a lot also, and this I guess would be another separate tip, is when pricing your work, like understand that there are so many more factors that go into it than just the value of your work. Like society is predisposed to not value it enough. Like think about it as, um, and I'll talk a little bit about my experience in Peru with this because that's kind of flashing through my mind, but that this is traditionally like women's work. And think about it, traditionally women have been underpaid for their labor compared to men, especially when they would do this alongside caring for children in the house and it was meant to be supplemental income. So no, it's not viewed the same as like what men traditionally might do in their free time, like woodworking, right? Like it's not, and you know, they're underpaid all things considered now too, because you know, industrialization, yada, yada, yada. But crochet still can't be done by hand. So when you see this stuff in stores, it's with sweatshops and there's all that we're competing with. We're competing with systemic patriarchy. And for those of us who are maybe like men or like need not on the binary, like there's for, for men or for male presenting people, you can have like all sorts of toxic masculinity because people will just make judgments off the cuffs at markets or whatever else. Um, and I think it's really important to kind of like note that like it's a fight to get your work valued and that it doesn't, if you sell something for less than it's worth, sometimes you need to like step back and realize that it's not about your work. It's not. And so with that, it's like, I'll sell stuff. I sell stuff cheaper than I should to like, for like things that kids would like. And I have the privilege to do that. Like it's not gonna hurt me monetarily in a significant way. It's like a coffee less you know, but I like to do it when there's kids because we're like, honestly, just like college students who really need emotional support plus you're a nice thing because especially with kids or people or college students or just like pretty much anyone who doesn't have a lot of income, like it's so hard to get handmade nice things. And if my work can make someone that happy, I have the privilege from my position of being able to do so, it's not going to mean I go hungry. It's not going to mean rent doesn't get paid, you know? So I guess that's the other thing. It's just like, know that society is undervaluing your work and contributing to that perception. And it doesn't mean that your work and your love for what you do isn't valuable. And I guess I'll, yeah, like in Peru, I, I said I would talk about this. So I'll probably talk about that and wrap it, wrap this up. But in Peru, um, they still actively weave and stuff. Like in my yarn haul video, I actually show some of the, like, um, like the alpaca yarn for starters, but also some hand woven things I bought from like a local community studio. They like fund commu their community center partially from it. Um, and it was way undervalued and it was like a day of work for the equivalent of slightly under, of like slightly over $5. That is horrific. And I tried to give them extra not in like a condescending US like you know like the US traveler way but just because I appreciated their work and wanted to support the community center but they refused and just said that my support was plenty and that they were really grateful that we came and I think she just was very happy that I loved it and while I wish that you know I could have meant that they could get the item they need to repair needed to repair one of their looms or something like that um you know, I'm just grateful she knew I appreciated it. So honestly, kind of tangent, the not like super neat or whatever else, but you know, those are just some tips I'd recommend as you get into crochet or as you continue your journey with it. And above all, you know, have fun with it.